Why do I prioritise diversity education at Depto High School? Um, I guess overall it's, it, the strategy is designed to prepare our graduates for work, earning and learning around the world in the future. Um, and we're a very Anglo school. We've got 41 Aboriginal kids and a small number of students from uh, Pacific Islands and so on. But essentially we're Anglo-Saxon. But our students, our graduates, are going to earn and learn globally. And so I guess five years ago I took the, the broad issue to the PNC and said, Mr Rudd's put up lots of money for Engage with Asia, that's a starting ground, but overall um, would the parents support this strategy of, um, of widening our oeuvre, if you like, and uh, enthusiastically supported by the PNC. And the president said, uh, oh, well, Andrew, if this is where our kids are going to work, we, we'd better get into it. And that's driven a whole lot of um, decisions and strategic thinking. Um, we do lots of vocational education here and lots of preparation for transition to university TAFE traineeships and so on. And our students are going to do that in a multicultural Australia and around the globe. And so preparing inside that though is a, is a, I think it also builds community and so on. Anyway, off that strategy, we've hung a whole lot of things. Um, Engage with Asia is a big theme at Dapto High School and um, we have a relationship with the South Korean schools, uh, one school in particular, and students. We ho host students from Korea and we send staff and students and parents. Last year grandparents went with us to a school in uh, Siwon High School in uh, Korea. Um, we've also been doing quite a bit of curriculum writing Three of our staff members got, got, got a grant to produce uh, teaching resources, learning resources, with an Asian element in it. So English, um, human society and environment and art uh, all got into that and they've written modules for, um, for use in other schools. And we, we're, we're encouraging exchange students to come to Dapto High School and we have quite a few, Japan and Norway and France and so on. Mm. We're encouraging our students to go on exchange. Quite a few are reluctant. And I think that sort of emphasises our challenge. Just today we've had the SRC present to us on a professional learning day uh, seven ideas to improve teaching and learning. They've come up with, a, with an idea to have a, a sort of like a tolerance day, if you like. This year, rather than appoint half a dozen prefects and captains, whatever, we widened that pool of student leaders and gave lots of people a tag. Prefect in charge of uh, the environmental issues or performing arts and so on. And a couple of days later, this a young man came to see me and said, um, could I be the prefect for same-sex attracted? I said, pardon? He said, well, you know, you've got a prefect for a sports committee and performing arts, I would like to be the prefect for same-sex attracted. That, that got us thinking as well. Um, and we got a, an organisation called ACON. We announced a meeting just quietly in year groups that we were going to have a, an event for same-sex attracted students and half a dozen turned up and so on. The minute you open the door to lateral thinking, students came out of the, the woodwork, came forward to say, well, here's a group that, that needs some attention. Well, I think it's a, a measure of civility, if you like, uh, the way we relate to and care for and look after people of a minority view, let's call it that way, whether you're same-sex attracted or whether you've lost your finger or uh, of a different religion, you've got a particular health challenge like autism, whatever, the way we accept that diversity is the measure. Most schools, I, w I would think, are doing something in their own way to address the issue of diversity competence. What our school is doing is, uh, among other things, is that one of the, the main projects we have is an interfaith project with an Islamic school. 
And that brings two different faiths together in year six students to share their views, share their beliefs, share their customs, to explore the differences, to explore that which is often controversial. And that has been powerful. The whole school approach is an ideal and an aspiration, which I think you have to aim for. Um, I don't think it will be immediately noticeable and nor do I think it will be easy. I think quite naturally adults have quite fixed views. And I know that in our interfaith project over the years, we've had certain adults probably from both schools who have held quite fixed views about each other's political, religious stance. But I think the change in them is noticeable through the change in the child. So I think the children's reflections, and often the children reflect on a family view themselves. I think the children's reflections give us a lot of encouragement and give us a lot of hope. I'm not sure whether teachers need to be trained, but I do think they need to be aware of how they can, the powerful influence, their own powerful influence. Our teachers are very aware of how important our interfaith project is. Our teachers embrace it. They have full acknowledgement and endorsement from me as to how important it is. That's part of the process. If we can take our interfaith project, we bring a Jewish child, an Islamic child together. It's all very well to learn that from a, a classroom perspective, but to experience that, to bring those children together who on each, for each child, they've been influenced by a, a particular narrative and to have those narratives questioned is one thing that's powerful. 